Hi Matrix and welcome to this finance video, part two of Present Value Annuity, brought to you by the Answer Series. In part one of this video, we saw how to derive the Present Value Annuity formula, and in this video, we will look at applying it. So first, just a reminder of the formula. Here it is. To calculate P, we take X, which is the regular payment, into 1 minus 1 plus I, where I is the interest rate, to the negative N, where N is the number of payments, and divide it all by I. Okay, so let's start here by looking at a simple example. Mishak can afford to pay 4,000 Rand at the end of each month for repayments on a car that he hopes to buy. Interest on a loan is charged at 9% per annum, compounded monthly. Calculate the value of the loan he will be granted to buy the car, which he must repay by the end of the four years. Now this is a simple case where you have to decide which values go with which parameter in the formula. In other words, which value goes for X, which goes for I, and which for N. Why don't you pause the video here to give it a try on your own first before moving on to see the solution. So here is the solution. How does this compare to your answer? Hopefully you remembered to use the memory for the interest rate here, 9% compounded monthly. It is useful to use the memory for the monthly interest rate because it appears in two places in the formula. And so using the memory will simplify the entering of your final calculation on the calculator. Let's look now at substituting. 4,000 Rand is the monthly payment, so that gets substituted for X. And Mishak wants to pay off the car in four years on a monthly basis, so N is 48 payments. What our answer is telling us is that with monthly payments of 4,000 Rand, Mishak will be able to buy a car worth just over 160,000 Rand. Let's have a look now at worked example two. Ace was granted a bursary which covered his university tuition as well as a lump sum deposit from which Ace could withdraw 2,500 Rand at the end of each month for living expenses during the four years when he was studying. The annuity earned interest at 8,6% per annum compounded monthly. Calculate the value of the lump sum deposit. So this is not a loan question. Even though when we derived the present value annuity formula, we spoke about a loan and payments into the future that had to be scaled back to work out the present value. In other words, the value of the loan. This scenario fits into the same category where the deposit is a present value and the withdrawals are payments in the future and their value will also be scaled back. So knowing this, it means we simply have to apply our information to the present value annuity formula. Pause the video here and give it a go first on your own. Does the answer you got match the answer here? Hopefully you used the memory for the monthly interest rate. X's value is the monthly withdrawal of 2,500 and there are 48 withdrawals. The withdrawals occur monthly over four years. The answer here is the value of the initial deposit just over 100,000 Rand. This would have been the amount left over from his bursary once his tuition was paid. Now, an interesting side note here is if we take 2,500 Rand, which was Ace's withdrawals, and times it by 48, because he made 48 of them, this comes to 120,000 Rand. But this figure is larger than our answer. So how is it that he drew more than what was deposited? The reason is because along the way, the initial deposit was earning interest. In this worked example, we look at what we need to do if we are asked to calculate the payments, in other words, X's value. Lesejo takes out a loan of 2.5 million rand to buy a house. The bank charges interest at a rate of 8,75% per annum, compounded monthly. Lesejo will repay the loan over 30 years with equal monthly payments, starting at the end of the month when the loan is granted. Calculate the value of the monthly payment. So what do we have this time? We have the loan amount. We have the interest rate, compounded monthly. We have the time period. And in this question, they are asking us to calculate the monthly payment. Pause the video at this point to give this question a go. Hopefully you are smiling. If not, let's go and have a look through the steps taken to clarify your understanding. First, we advise using the memory for the monthly interest rate. Then, because it is 30 years, the number of monthly payments is 360. 
The present value of the loan is two and a half million, so here again a reminder to use 10 to the power 6 instead of risking typing in the correct number of zeros on the calculator. Because we need to solve for x, we need to make it the subject. And to do this, we need to times the two and a half million by the a and divide this product by this bracket. Our answer for x is then 19,667 rand and 51 cents. A sobering thought that for Lesejo to buy a house worth two and a half million rand, she needs to pay close to 20,000 rand every month for 30 years. You'll see here in example four that we have a similar situation to example two in that it is not a loan. Let's read through the question. Mike won 500,000 rand on the lotto. He deposited this into an account earning interest at a rate of 7,2% per annum compounded monthly and planned to take time out to explore Africa. His plan was to withdraw a fixed amount at the end of each month for five years, starting one month after his deposit. Calculate the value of these monthly withdrawals. This worked example is also similar to worked example 3 in that it is the monthly amounts we have been asked to calculate. So this question is about withdrawals of a present value of 500,000 Rand. See if you can see which values go where in the formula. And pause the video now to give yourself time to give it a try. I hope you managed to give the question a try. How did you do? Just to confirm which value goes where in the formula, we see here, again using the memory for the monthly interest rate, and then the present value, the value of Mike's winnings, 500,000 Rand. He plans to take the monthly withdrawals for five years, so 60 withdrawals. And to solve for x, multiply the 500,000 by a and divide by this bracket. Okay, let's have a look at another example now. This one has a number of subsections to it. Here it says, a loan of 185,000 Rand was taken out at an interest rate of 14,5% per annum compounded monthly. Starting one month after the loan was granted, repayments were made at the end of each month for 10 years. So it is a good idea to read the whole question through first to give yourself a feeling of what all is being asked. So here you asked to calculate in A the value of the monthly payments. In B, the total interest paid on the loan. And in C, how much of the first payment actually went towards paying off the loan. So if we start with A here, it is asking us to calculate the monthly payments. Hopefully this part question feels familiar. Pause the video here to give A a try. Now let's be reminded of what B was asking us for. The total interest paid on the loan. Pause again and take a moment to give B a try now. And then finally, in C, they want to know how much of the first payment actually went towards paying off the loan. Pause one last time to give C a go. Let's have a look first here at the solution for A. Use the memory for the monthly interest rate. Then monthly for 10 years, so there will be 120 payments. The loan value is 185,000 and we solve for x and get an answer of 2,928 rand and 31 cents. When we have completed one part question, it's useful to tick off that it's complete. Now a point of importance here is that our answer for x is a rounded off answer, but because it represents a payment, it needs to be used as a value with full rands and cents. In other words, we can't pay 31 comma something something cents. It needs to be a whole number with a fixed number of cents. So if we consider x's value in the rest of the question, it will need to be used in its rounded off form. This is therefore slightly different to our rounding off rule mentioned previously where we have said not to round off mid-calculation. So for B, to calculate the total interest paid on the loan, a good question here to ask is how much was actually paid? The total amount paid was the rounded off amount we calculated in part A, and this amount was made 120 times. So this amount here is how much was actually paid altogether. But what was the loan? Well, the loan was 185,000 Rand. 
So the difference between these two amounts is the interest. This is a significant amount, if you think about it. The part of the amount that was paid as interest is only just less than the initial value of the loan. Let's look now at part C, which was asking how much of the first payment actually went towards paying off the loan. Remember the monthly interest rate that we saved in memory in the first part of the question as A? And the initial value of the loan was 185,000 Rand. So at the end of the first month, the interest was the 185,000 times that A, which gives us this figure here, which when rounded off is 2,235 Rand and 42 cents. However, we paid 2,928 Rand and 31 cents as our monthly payment. Remember our solution for part A? This amount was interest. Therefore, the difference between these amounts is what of the loan was actually paid off. So, where our monthly payment is close to 3,000 Rand, not even 700 Rand went towards paying off the loan. It is quite sobering to see how big the chunk is of interest in this first repayment. This is not part of the question, but it may be interesting to look at how this scenario can be understood through looking at it graphically. We can see here that the loan started at 185,000 Rand. And then if you look here at 150,000, which is only a 35,000 Rand drop, it's taken a long time, over three years, to get to this value. Then from there to 100,000, which is a drop of 50,000, it took just less than three years. And the next 50,000 Rand drop to 50,000 Rand happens over about two years. And then the final 50,000 Rand drop takes about one and a half years. This trend emphasizes for us the fact that as our loan value gets smaller, the interest portion of the payment decreases and the portion of the regular payment, that is the part that is actually going towards paying off the loan, increases. It is this that causes the curvature to have this shape. And then, as we come to the close of our video, just a reminder to refer to our Grade 12 Maths 2 in 1 study guide for further such questions. More practice will assist you in feeling more comfortable and confident with these kinds of examples. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you now feel confident with where to use and how to apply the present value annuity formula. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.